Hi, welcome back to the Parkinson's Doctor uh, YouTube channel. This is Dr. Amor Rodriguez, a neurologist and movement disorder specialist at the uh, Neurology One Clinic in Orlando, Florida. And uh, today I will be speaking about um, MR focus ultrasound and deep brain stimulation. So uh, this is probably one of the most common questions that people bring to my clinic, especially those with more advanced Parkinson's disease. Uh, people are learning a lot. I think that they're getting a lot of advertisement about um, the MR focus ultrasound. And um, obviously there are, there are many questions about this. So today I will briefly uh, describe both technologies. And at the end, I will give you my point of view about each of them. Um, before I begin, um, as, as I always say, thank you very much to those that have subscribed to the channel. I, I really appreciate that. And I encourage all of you to subscribe to make sure that you continue uh, accessing the, the videos and having a notification when new videos are um, available. And also, uh, I appreciate if you will uh, like those, uh, those videos after you see them. Um, it will give me a little bit of an idea about the kind of things that you all would like to uh, continue listening about, and I will be uh, making uh, more videos for that as well. Um, today, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I will be comparing the two treatments for Parkinson's disease, MR focus ultrasound, and deep brain stimulation. Uh, deep brain stimulation goes by the words of DBS. And to begin, I have to tell you that both MR focus ultrasound and DBS are effective treatments for alleviating the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. They are both approved by the FDA uh, for these indications to help people with Parkinson's and to help people with essential tremors as well. However, people need to understand that these technologies work in different ways and they have their own unique risk and benefits. So in this discussion, uh, I will explore the differences between these two treatments to help patients and caregivers make informed decisions about which treatment option may be uh, the best for individual needs. So once again, as a quick summary, we know that Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder affecting the production of dopamine in the brain. And as these levels of dopamine production decrease, patients experience more tremors, rigidity, slowness of movements, and balance problems. And this is the criteria for the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. These are the symptoms that most people with Parkinson's will have at some point. However, after years with the condition, the symptoms might not improve as well to the medications. And it is at this point that we start the conversation about surgical option for the treatment of Parkinson's disease. Now, before I get into MR focus ultrasound and DBS, let me go back about 50 to 60 years ago before DBS was available. And back then, there were these ablation procedures such as thalamotomy and pallidotomy that, you know, they actually were done for quite some time until DBS became available. And these uh, procedures were used to treat refractory cases of Parkinson's disease. And by this, we mean people that they had symptoms that they were affecting their quality of life and were not improving with medicines. And uh, for example, uh, one of those procedures was the uh, thalamotomy. And the thalamotomy involved the precise destruction of a tiny area of the brain called the thalamus. And actually in the thalamus, there was a very, very specific area that had to be destroyed. And by doing this, there was some control of the involuntary movements seen in Parkinson's disease, particularly the tremors. The other procedure that was available back then was the surgical destruction of a small area of the internal globus pallidus. And uh, by destroying that area, that could help alleviate the, the stiffness and dyskinesias caused by Parkinson's disease and the Parkinson's disease medications when we speak about the dyskinesias. However, there were potential adverse events associated with these procedures, including bleeding, infection, stroke, and the, the most dreaded one and the one that became a major issue was uh, the permanent uh, presence of neurological deficits. For example, um, it was not uncommon to see people suffering from speech impairment 
And uh, because of this, these procedures became less popular when DPS became available, and I will explain why. So now let's deep dive into MR Focus Ultrasound and Deep Brain Stimulation, and I will begin with MR Focus Ultrasound. So in MR Focus Ultrasound, uh, basically this technology uses high energy sound waves uh, to produce heat and destroy a small area within the brain that is causing the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And this uh, procedure was initially uh, uh, used for the treatment of uh, tremors in people with essential tremor, and eventually it moved uh, to be used for people with Parkinson's disease. And during this procedure, a patient will lie inside an MRI machine while they're wearing this helmet-shaped divide that focuses sound waves on a specific target in the brain. And the heat generated by the sound wave will destroy that target tissue, which can reduce or eliminate uh, some of the symptoms associated with Parkinson's disease. Now, one of the benefits of MR Focus Ultrasound is that it is a non-invasive procedure, meaning there is no need for incisions or implanted devices. So from that perspective, it's actually a, simple, a more simple procedure and uh, uh, to even understand this better, uh, when people have this procedure, they typically can go home the same day or they can resume normal activities within a few days. However, this is a treatment that is not suitable for all patients with Parkinson's disease and still the long-term effects. Speaking about uh, benefit or adverse events are still being studied. We do have some data. This is what led the product to be approved by the FDA. However, uh, we still feel, I, I still feel, let, let, let me put it that way, that we need to uh, collect a little bit more of information about the long-term benefit of this technology. And we're not talking about six months to a year or two years uh, uh, more than that. Now, if you can see, this procedure is very similar to some extent to the previous uh, thalamotomies and pallidotomies. However, this uses a much more advanced technology. So, so now, you know, in the past that we have to drill a hole in the head, we have to put a probe to burn uh, uh, the deep areas in the brain and do some um, uh, localization of the parts of the brain that have to be uh, uh, burned. However, now, uh, you know, this technology, what they do is they create a three-dimensional map of the brain. They put some coordinates and they obviously, because technology improves over time, um, you know, the, the, there's an opportunity for, for this to be more accurate. Now, let's go ahead and move on to uh, deep brain stimulation. And um, to summarize, deep brain stimulation is a surgical treatment that involves implanting electrodes in the brain. And these electrodes are attached to a pulse generator, uh, generator implanted under uh, the skin uh, in the chest. And this generator will send electrical impulses to these electrodes, which can modulate abnormal brain activity that causes the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. There is a second video about deep brain stimulation for Parkinson's. I actually show how the device looks like, how the cable looks like. So I will encourage you to take the time uh, to take a look at it to understand this a little bit better. Now, the one of the benefits, and I believe that this is the main benefit of deep brain stimulation, is that it can be adjusted as needed to provide optimal symptom control as time goes by. The equipment that is utilized in, in DBS is very small, and, um, you know, this technology has a, a robust track record at improving the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. The other thing is that it can be used bilateral in people with Parkinson's disease compared to MR Focus Ultrasound that is not approved to be bilaterally. And there is an element of reversibility here. You know, the, the footprint of this deep brain stimulation device is very small. And uh, if, if there is an issue about uh, potential adverse events, obviously, we can modulate this to make this better. And even furthermore, you know, the, the technology that we have these days uh, that allow us to uh, modulate uh, the direction of the current that we're uh, providing is just, in my impression, mind-blowing. Great technologies uh, that are available for people these days. However, this is a surgical procedure in the brain. And because of that, DBS carries some risks, including infection, bleeding, 
and stroke. So, so it requires a surgical procedure. There has to be some cutting in order to put this in, and it takes multiple steps in order to complete this procedure. So if we try to summarize this, both MR focus ultrasound and deep brain stimulation are effective treatment for Parkinson's disease that can help alleviate the motor symptoms. And I will tell you from now that I have used both uh, uh, technologies in my clinic. And, uh, and I think that the most important thing is to do a, a, a comprehensive evaluation of each patient to see well, you know, which technology is going to be the best one for each of them. Remember that MR Focus Ultrasound is non-invasive, while DBS is a surgical procedure that requires an implanted device. So, you know, there's an element here that has to be taken into consideration. And I do believe that the most important thing is that people that are considering this need to have an evaluation with their doctor uh, to discuss uh, which one might be uh, the best option for, for them. Now, my point of view, what do I think about this? What is it that I recommend to uh, the patients in my clinic? And uh, I'll tell you that I have been uh, uh, working uh, with uh, Parkinson's disease and deep brain stimulations for a little over 20 years now. And, and my training was actually in deep brain stimulation. So I was there in, the, in those early stages when uh, we started doing DBS and it became uh, something quite popular. And I will tell you right from the bat that my preference in most cases is for deep brain stimulation over MR focus ultrasound for the treatment of Parkinson's disease because in first place, we have a very long track record about the effectiveness of this uh, product plus the fact that we have the ability to adjust this as time goes by. So remember that None of these procedures are cures for Parkinson's disease. None of them will stop the progression of Parkinson's. So as the conditions continues moving along, the, the deep brain stimulation, because I can modulate, I can adjust over time, allows me to continue changing those settings to uh, accommodate to the new symptoms that people might be having. But once again, as I mentioned before, Every patient case is unique, and I strongly encourage uh, people to have an evaluation with a movement disorder specialist, okay? Or somebody that has a very, very uh, uh, large experience with both MR focus ultrasound and deep brain stimulation to assess which therapy might be the best for you. And in my impression, uh, here we're talking about having an evaluation with a neurologist or a neurologist that is a movement disorder specialist. Those will be the two uh, people that will be able to uh, assess your condition properly. Number one, confirm the diagnosis. And in second place, make a recommendation about which therapy might be the best. So uh, at this point, I'm just going to pause. I really hope that you find uh, this, video, this video to be useful. Um, you know, remember, these are very tough uh, uh, decisions that many people will be making uh, when they make a decision about undergoing deep brain stimulation. And, and the truth is that sometimes we go to the Internet, we, we go to Google or Bing or whatever platform we would like to use to do Internet searches. And we read some information, right? But, but I am trying to provide you the perspective of a person that is working with very advanced people with Parkinson's disease and, and trying to make these decisions, trying to figure out what is the best option for each patient. So as I mentioned before, I have used both technologies in both Parkinson's disease as well as uh, essential tremors. And uh, I, I, I feel like I, I have uh, a, a good understanding that um, might be able to uh, help people make the, the right decision about this. So with this, I'm just going to uh, wrap it up. Uh, remember that I will have uh, this information in writing in the uh, learnaboutparkinson.com website. Uh, that is the sister uh, website where we are um, uh, putting uh, quite a lot of information about Parkinson's disease that you can go anytime and, and read about. And we have a summary of each video in the uh, learnaboutparkinson.com website. So with this, I, I, I thank you again. Uh, make sure that you subscribe and until the next uh, video. Thank you.